chairs. You know I'm too old to stand up. We'll get you chairs. Okay, this time we'll start our Thursday meeting. She's done an excellent work uh, job putting it together. So, for the limited time, we'll let her start, and then we can comment as we go. Um, we're going to start out. This is a, just a very brief workshop. It's a bird's eye view. We're going to kind of get everything back in your books, kind of explain a few items in it. It's going to take you some time to read and look at the budget. You, so, um, we're going to hand out tonight the pieces. They're going to go behind your uh, your tabs. So the uh, Full document's going to include what you've already been handed out, and we'll be putting that all tonight in a full PDF that will go on the website tomorrow. So it's actually larger than the point in reprinting those pages for you tonight. So, um, and there's also, she's going to hand, she's handing out, this is the, just your cover page, it changes. Uh, on your cover page, there's a required statement uh, that the state legislature requires. It just talks about Estimated property tax is kind of an odd little statement. Basically, it looks at revenues, and this could and can change depending on tax rates. We have not adopted a tax rate. We're not even there yet, so it is required to be on the budget. So I'm not going to really go into that because we're going to talk more about revenues and debt service and next next meeting because that's when we'll be getting our effective rate and rollback rate and that kind of information. Um, the calendar's in here again, just kind of a reminder. Don't forget all these meetings are so important. We must have forums. We can't miss any um, due to the, the uh, deadlines and requirements for publication. So just kind of a, a reminder. <coughs> um, again, we have basically seven weeks, six weeks really, before we the adopted budget. We've got lots of time to talk. We've got lots of meetings. We'll be going through a lot of the different departments and some of the different funds. Uh, we have lots of workshops in before and then council meetings with various. The, what's in your budget book when you're going to get these? Everything at this point is balanced. We, as required, so we've handed out a balanced budget, so we'll propose. Um, just to kind of give you brief information, we, we mentioned this in one of the budget workshops. Health insurance, we, at this point, we're still going with a 30% increase. He, has received back Humana's information, trying to get them to go down, and we're going out for re-rate through other carriers. So that'll be the next few weeks, and we'll have him come at one of the budget meetings. Uh, uh, the 30%, it's also mentioned in, this, in the cover letter, and there's some information <coughs> later on, so what the cost of that effect is. It is included in the, in the budget right now. And we're talking about the 30% reduction in our deficit uh, per the insolvency plan that was approved by the council. Um, so, again, I'm just, we do have, we did get, receive information from the tax office. We're still working on the effective rate, rollback rate, and all that information. So, right now, the, what I've been given is the taxable assessed value is uh, $274,806,405. Say that one more time. That's when they do all their calculations and they take out prior years and roll back to the bunch of things. But that's the number we use to calculate tax loss. So, and again, next next budget workshop we'll have a lot more information on debt service. There'll be some spreadsheets we're going to give you uh, to go along with more information. And we're still in the process. Uh, so, again, that was your first little section. If you want, anything else? This one. Which one? Oh yeah, you can just, that one. Yeah, you can hand that one out. What you're going to hand out now is, you can just put this in the back of your book. The charter requires us to include prior year's uh, budget uh, revenue, and excuse me, revenue expense actual. So this document is all of that that's required by the charter. What we're going to be handing out for budget work, uh, 
work purposes, a little bit different look and it's a little easier to read. That gets really complicated for me because it's got four years and lots of numbers. And so, uh, but yeah, in there and it's required and you want to look at it in your sleeve and you're welcome to. Uh, okay, so general fund, the general fund will be the next one. I'm going to do. got a tab that's general fund and this packet we're handing out is a line the general fund. Council this book with basic information at the start that had that, and now she's going to give them every single uh, tab information. Um, and again, you know, we don't have time to go through all these departments, so what I'm going to just kind of show you is talk to you about how, how to read it so you'll understand each one. The general fund, again, we've kind of been going over different funds. The general fund for each, well, actually, for each fund, we've got a recap page. And depending on the fund, if it has departments, there's a recap in front of each department. So this will help you kind of be able to follow and, and not get lost in all the lines and numbers. So again, for the general fund, it is a balanced budget. You've got your column and your recaps that has your amended budget numbers and your city manager proposed budget column and then the difference. And if you mentioned, I will say, on the general fund recap, it's a little bit different for some of the others because of the reduction of fund balance that we have to do for the 30%. Um, it's included in the budget, so then I have to, at the bottom, I have to take it back out because it, it'll never be an actual entry. It just it means we're going to, we kind of made it an expense that doesn't have any activity. So it just takes the place, and at the end of the year, there won't be activity for it. There will never be an entry for it. It would just be the excess revenue we didn't spend will go to help the deficit. So at the bottom of this first page, you see reduction of fund balance of 51,378, which is your 30% of the projected fund balance pending this year of 171,262 in the red. Um, so and again, by, you know, in the general fund, you have each department. What we've done is a, a page that has your major budget changes. Um, and, and you, when you look at your department and the detail of the, the report, there may be some other changes that we're still doing, you know, clean up, moving some money, trying to get things appropriately coded. So this isn't everything, but I tried to make bring out the, the largest dollars and the most important pieces. So as we go through, if there's any questions in the next few weeks, you know, shoot them to the manager or someone the mayor or somebody, so if we have questions and you are looking at something, we can get the information for the next week. Or to you. Or to me. <laughs> That's to me. Uh, so again, that, that just kind of helps you to see what changes happen in each department. The, I guess the next one, well actually, I'm going to stay on the general fund. Right now, there is no property, excuse me, there is only $46,000 increase in property tax, which was shown on that front page. That again, could be changing. We did not in, uh, increase sales tax at this point. We don't see uh, an increase at this at this point. We, we've increased from last year, but that was already budgeted in this current year. So we do know we have McCoy's and we have the small, small strip mall, so there probably will be some additional revenue, but right now we're not budgeting for that. Uh, so, and then the... Let me just, uh, yeah. on a quick note on the uh, general administration, throughout the, uh, the several meetings that we've had, she's talked about reallocating uh, the positions from the water and sewer, or from the general fund to the water and sewer to appropriately uh, charge for the service on that. And so you'll see in, in the general recap where she's taking those positions and now they're not gonna come out of the general fund, they're coming out of the water and sewer. So it'll give you details on that. And of course, every, uh, 
the salary and benefits portion of there and anything else that we talked about. And we were we we have been scrambling, so we did not get to the org chart. So we will have at the next meeting an org chart that will show the changes. And we go through and then actually once we get to read because we do have some positions in the general fund, um, some changes we did uh, reallocate some positions. We also took um, vacant positions in the parks, and we have in here, and you can we'll read and talk about it more. The possibility of turning those free positions into temporary, using temporary labor that are vacant now, it saves money. You don't need that many people all year long. You have your slow times, and Alex, we talked to him, and he, he's like, there are times I really don't need as staff, full staff. So a great solution. Used in other cities, a lot of other cities use it. They do it for refuse for their trash companies. Um, ones that, since we don't have, we don't own our trash company, but a lot of places do that for the the gentlemen that ride on the back. It is, it is cheaper, so. Um, utility fund, we ended up that one. Waste pool, or, yeah, water sewer. Utility fund, this one, right? Utility fund, yes. This will go under utility fund tab. Yeah, it's water, it really is water. <coughs> Sewer fund, you know, we had mentioned in one of the other workshops there was there was going to be funds to do some improvements, small capital, large. We've listed those, so when you go through, you can, you'll see on again on the recaps, you'll be able to see some of the things that are funded and unfunded at this point. We are still on some of the requests that we've been talking about during the budget amendment a uh, week or so ago, still waiting on quotes. Some we have in, some we don't, and Unfortunately, that's the goal of industry and people are busy. You don't have businesses hungry and, and it's difficult, so. Um, as I look through this form, mm -hmm. um, you've got budget requests funded, unfunded, under general administration, you had shown some is funded. These you don't specify if they are funded or not. I might have just left it off. Which one? Is this it? one is under utility administration 501. Contingency possible 30%. Uh, sorry, it's fine. Yeah. Thank you. I just, yeah, both health insurance is well. So, um, so this kind of, it's, we'll, as we go along, we still have several weeks, so hopefully we'll get some more quotes in and, and some things may change as we uh, go along. Some of the actual items we've had in the budget amendment we have carried over because we're not going to get to them. There, we, we one of the things we have it's been talked about is getting the chamber some money, so that's some things we need to work towards. You'll need to, you know, start working on getting some type of a contract and determining how funds can be how you want to allocate funds to them and what kind of information they need to give us to show that it's eligible. So, that's, that's something to be working towards. The street maintenance tax fund is located in your special revenue fund. That that is again the sales from sales tax, and we have 
been working with MS Engineering a little bit, and we've talked with the financial advisors, which, oh, and by the way, they were going to be here tonight, but they had family, he had a family emergency, so um, we couldn't put them on the agenda. So, the we next time they're going to come give a presentation. So these are funded projects? No, right? these are not funded. These, at this point, we still have to do some. The, these came from the presentations that Andy and Sherry put together, and they're in the order that they were 12, 13 year, 13, 14, and 14, 15. At this time, we still need to do some allocation, you know, stuff, prioritization, dollar wise. What a possibility is that we could issue $1.1 million on a three year tax note against the sales tax, street maintenance tax money. Uh, would allow us to do with the amount we're going to have left over fund balance this year and the next three years, we could payments of four hundred thousand and still leave us thirty-seven thousand for day-to-day -day maintenance each of the next three years. So it would allow us to get projects possibly done with outside sources while our guys are still doing day-to-day -day maintenance. So this is still in the works. Again, we were still trying to get good numbers. You know, it's been several months ago that we got how much it would cost. Contractor, so you know, not sure where we are at this point. But that's so that's some more things we'll be discussing as we go through the budget meetings. Again, child safety, I don't ever budget for that. That's the little bitty bit of money that you get on uh, tickets for seat belts. I believe one or it can only really basically be spent on school safety guards or crosswalk painting. So Again, you only have about a thousand something dollars in that fund. You're not lucrative there, so. Court. <laughs> it's, it's a very real small, you don't get many of those tickets, that's why. <coughs> court technology, court security fund. Um, again, I don't, last year, um, the gentleman Tom, he did put in for budget for revenue and expenses. I typically don't, again, it's, you can put a small amount, but you, you just aren't guaranteed you're going to get it. The, uh, something that will be coming back is COPSI. Um, they'll probably even be coming to give a presentation at some point, too. It is uh, software slash, oh, what do you want to call it? It's, it I, I remember the discussion just yeah. quickly about COPSI, and uh, they were going to come back and answer the questions about that was actually ticket writer. This is a little bit more better. Okay, Perfect but letter. again, <laughs> uh, to to uh, seek you know council approval to do that. Yeah, this, this uh, is actually a bigger package. Again, it offers that, more. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. I understand. Um, and so one of the things is that this money it can be funded with your court technology money and seizure money, and this would allow it to be in all the vehicles. It gives them laptops. The police officers have laptops that tie in to all of the. <coughs> Entities that are within Copsy. So, say someone's running in Carn City and they type it in, then our guys know look for this vehicle. It also has a ticket writer portion that we similar to what was brought before, so which will help in court tremendously. So, something we'll be talking some more about. It actually in this budget, if we went those way, with the options that there are, we wouldn't actually be dealing with a payment until 2014 15, but we could still go forward now. Recreational fee funds at this time, you know, we, they're still working on getting their uh, meetings and being able to have them. And that money is, they, the Parks Foundation helps to determine projects and then it comes to council and we <coughs> decide with them and if there's any grants or anything like that. Text dot, Texas Parks and Wildlife. Okay, you're showing the transfer out to the general fund? No, there is no transfer out. What do I see on page 94 here? Parks and Rec. Uh, it is the variance. It's zero. The no. variance is zero. It was okay. a 30. It was last yeah, year, but it did not happen this in this year. Yeah. Originally, they had, and y'all, Tom had expected the foundation to get going faster, and so there, but there is no, there's no money been spent out of it at all since its inception. So. Parks and Wildlife actually have money uh, allocated to them to do grant and funding programs this year. If you were, in the last two years, the government didn't give them grant money to go out and fund, so there's money available with Parks and Wildlife to match this this year finally. So, so hopefully we'll have some 
maybe you know, <coughs> what we do at least know like you know it shows you how much we actually are gonna we have available and uh, currently the ending fund balance proposed is, is expected to be fifty six thousand nine hundred ninety six so. <coughs> capital projects is in the also is in your special revenue funds there's a small amount remaining we talked about this at the utility fund budget workshop one of, the, one of the items we feel strongly is the uh, plaza well storage tank to replace that. And we have in here, there's, uh, the engineer has given us uh, his proposal for the fees to do the bidding and construct, you know, the engineering portion of it as we go out for construction, go out for bids for construction. Um, we have 156,793 available. Of course, we don't know until the engineering portion gets done what the actual bids would come. Originally, just the tank, I think it was, about 82 years was 60,000. That was just that was really basically us doing the tank right there, and not a new pad side or anything. So is this the uh, the arbitrage that uh, that was uh, Mr. Rosenberg was talking about? Well, it's not arbitrage, but it's, there could be. It's subject to could be yes. Okay. What is the date that uh, the date at which we would be subject to arbitrage? When would the five years be on that? We need to spend it now. So, what you're telling me is that the cost on the storage tank is undetermined and it's going to take some time to acquire. <coughs> it should not take long. This is not a, a difficult project. Well, I mean, we're sitting here from a month ago or six weeks ago when we sat down and said, let's do some of these smaller projects and we don't have costs on them. That's true. Okay, so. And they're small, and that's the other reason. I mean, this would be a slide, just larger, you, uh, hopefully you would have people that actually build. Okay, so we have the potential, though, of a time issue that could affect us. What is the deadline on the arbitrage? I just have to go call someone to work on that. Okay. I think we need to know that and date. He, I believe Mr. Rosenberg said he felt this dollar amount was not um, an issue, so, from his email. I've not, not delved into that. Okay, well, I'd like to know the date that this is going to be subject to arbitrage because I certainly don't want to uh, forfeit $156,793. As I understand the arbitrage rules, okay, it's the difference in yield that we get. Okay, So I would like to know what amount is going to be subject to the arbitrage? Well, we need to hire an arbitrage compliance um, person to do that, and we can certainly do that. Well, I mean, if th this is a significant deal as I read what Mr. Rosenberg said. And if we have bond yield, it, because for, for lack of... We're probably in negative arbitrage because interest rates are so low. So it's, which is part of why he was saying that he felt to it's not because of the dollar amount that's left. But again, there are there are companies that handle all of that calculations. Again, from the letter that Mr. Rosenberg sent to the mayor and the council, he said we need to be aware of this. Okay. And based on what you've been telling us, that we have issues in getting bids and delays in obligating dollars. If this date could potentially impact the city and as I read the arbitrage rules if there is any that's subject to it all of it goes back that amount that's subject to arbitrage to the IRS plus penalty we need to be aware of what that amount is and what that date deadline is and not simply say you know oh maybe maybe not okay that's how we get in trouble so I would like to know again the amount and the date that we could potentially be subject to arbitrage. So you're saying if we wouldn't lose all of that, we would be penalized? Well, I mean, again, there's people that calculate that. We'll have to call a company and see what, I think they'll do it for a few hundred dollars. Ms. Laura, can we ask counsel to give us a better directive on that? Mr. Mr. Rosenberg? Hmm? Oh, you mean this attorney? Well, well yes, I mean, he's the one. Again, there, there are companies that, that actually do the calculation, so. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't have an answer right now, but yeah. that, that would be the, the, the thing 
the solution is that we need to call somebody and we need to see how much they're going to charge and get them to come in and, and do the calculations. Okay, so who does that? Um, you do with Rosenberg or some outside staff? Yeah. We can call and get find out. The company will come in and give a presentation, actually. So. Right. Yeah, and that's all we're saying. I mean, if that's that critical, if that's if that important, then let's put it on the agenda. <coughs> so. But if it's not, then Mr. Lou needs to be involved because he's the one guiding us on this. Mm -hmm. I would like to think. Right? Yeah, we can discuss that I think, later. We we've got the point. We'll follow through on that and get you the date. We, we have uh, a certain feeling about that portion and we can discuss it when we have it on, on an agenda. I'm going to give you the dates and the purpose for the letter. Thank you, Ms. Well. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have anything else? Refuse? Okay, the refuse is the These are two of the sections that go under your refuse and cemetery fund have. this type of fund. It could be a special revenue fund or just be into the general fund, but we didn't go there this year. So One of the, there are several things that we're going to be in, coming up. We'll be getting information. We have some information on the CPI increase. We need, uh, there's been discussion about wanting to maybe add bulk curbside pickup. We have additional size dumpsters that are being requested and uh, extra poly carts in the original contract that we need to get cleaned up on the dollars that we can charge and our service fee, the floor of the ISD, we several, about a month and a half or so ago, came and we're wanting to go into the co-op program. We've gotten uh, the piece of that portion of the contract rewritten um, that we'll have to bring to council. So there's a lot of other changes, so we're going to be bringing that all at once. All of that will include a rate ordinance that will have to go with it. So in the next few weeks, we'll be delving into that. Um, and cur currently, where we are, we are we're bringing in revenue equal to the expense. So. Cemetery fund, we have, uh, there's been uh, new, the one, need to have new water lines to sprinkle those out in the cemetery. Uh, number one is what it's considered the city cemetery number one. We're still waiting on some quotes for that. Then also the reconstruction of the roads, but that will be done in house. So uh, we're going to be working on that as well. Currently, there's about $51,192 in funds available. So, depending on how the water lines are going to come in as to how much road work we could do or vice versa. What's this $59,912? That is the, is the $51,000 plus the um, tools, I mean, uh, we have the chemicals. Lot. We have different line items. The capital outlay is those two line items. And why do you then say unfunded? Well, I just put that place so you can see what you're thinking that asset would be. Okay, so they're, they're funded, but not, we don't know yet if we're going to do both. So they're, you could leave it off. I mean, they're, they're not funded, unfortunately. One, I don't know if it's going to be both or one. Where's the fencing? It's current year. Yeah, it's current year. It was in the current year budget. Are any of our cemeteries? Yeah, we have no. No. Okay. no. But there is computer stuff. We have a portion of the software with insurance, chemicals, and some small tools and supplies um, that we take out of there. When an exterminator goes out there and does plants or bees that we don't handle. So that kind of comes from there instead of coming in the middle. Unit, the 
with 30%, doing 30% a year of the total deficit that we had, because the deficit would be gone in three plus years. But if we take, a say our deficit is only $100,000 this year, we're going to reduce it by 30%. If our deficit is $100,000 next year, we're only going to reduce it by 30%. That's $30,000. The original deficit was what we were reducing. So that $244,000 is a three plus year deficit. So it's that $73.98 each year, not what the new deficit is, we're only taking 30% of it. The goal was to eliminate that deficit in three plus years. Okay, so to we're, we're short in deficit reduction and that is critical to this, this insolvency plan. Uh, if we looked at the S&P rating the, and, and the downgrade that they gave us in the finer print of that, it said if this city failed to follow any of these steps, okay, they could potentially downgrade our credit rating even further. Okay. What's your, uh, what's your answer to that? Well, uh, that's how he wants to cap it. We'll certainly, when we get to the discussions, they can certainly raise tax rate or cut the budget. I mean, I, I, we have a balanced budget at this point. Um, that's it's now in council's hands. But we are meeting. Uh, I this felt that was what we were. We are meeting 30% uh, reduction this current, year. this current year. This is a proposed budget. If that's what the council wants on that, then we'll take it that direction, and then that will be incorporated well, into I, this budget. But if we, if we look at the, the budget deficit each year and say we're only going to take 30% of it and, and then reevaluate that budget deficit every year, we don't have a goal at the end to, to have eliminated the deficit. Okay, We've got to start with that total deficit. Okay, and so we're going to do 30% of that total deficit each year, not what that deficit is this year we're only going to do 30%, and what the deficit is next year we're only going to do 30%. Then ultimately it's going to take five plus years to eliminate that deficit. We have to wipe out that entire deficit. The original amount. Correct. Any other comments from the council members, other council members? I think, I mean, in a year at a time, we have to allow for specific things happening throughout the year. Um, I don't know that we're going to be able to do 30. I mean, so how much more do we need to do? I mean, other than for this year, so what is it for next year? 30% for the, it's 30% this fiscal year, 30% next, this proposed fiscal year, it's 30% that following fiscal year, and then we're down to 10%, then it's gone. But we're only doing this year, right? Isn't this just for the proposed well, 30%? Well, uh, uh, the, the councilman has a point. We, we're going to meet our 30% uh, uh, goal for this year. Yes. And we as a council and uh, the city manager want to meet another 30% of the original deficit, and she can work that in. So what is the difference from this balanced budget? Doing the way he said we'll have to find another $22,000 Okay. There's an the answer, 22000 that we've got to look at as we go through the next couple of weeks uh, on this budget to say, this is a goal, and, and it's a good goal, to say uh, that well, the, the entire purpose behind, behind this thing, sure. the entire purpose behind this budget process, as we talked about, was to, what is it going to cost to run the city? And then, after we've subtracted out what we know or suspect we're going to receive in sales tax, what we suspect we're going to receive in fees and permits and other revenues, What's left? And that's what we look at and compare to that two hundred and seventy million dollars to say what's the tax rate? What is the tax rate we need to propose? Sure. And and that way we're proposing a fair tax rate, a fair tax rate based on what it's gonna to take to operate this city. We don't build a budget based upon what we received in taxes last year or what we think we're gonna be able to get in taxes. We build a budget based on what it's going to take to operate the city. We go backwards into the budget. Sure. And then we we'll calculate the tax rate. And that's an easy amendment. Well, uh, uh, this is just a proposal. This is, exactly. this yeah, is just a proposal. Six more weeks. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. 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 Exactly.
in this, and I don't know if it's how we're going to be able to do it. It may be another one of those phantom line items like we did on this uh, reduction of fund it's, balance. It is kind of weird. <laughs> okay. Not a normal line item. <laughs> but, but there's a couple major pieces in here missing for me. Okay. The deficit, clearly we need to be able to do that. Um, development of a 90-day fund reserve by fiscal year 2018-19. I don't see anything that is dedicated to fund reserves. Okay, in order to do that, to meet that target of 2018-2019, we need to be setting a portion in this budget aside specifically for reserves. Otherwise, it's as more years come up, that's going to be a bigger and bigger chunk if we don't start doing it now. The other piece that, that I'm concerned about that I don't see in this that we've talked about was by the next fiscal year, 2015, 16, 13, 14, okay, 14, 15, two years out, we're looking at a three year budget cycle. So we need to be, or budget, not budget cycle, but a three-year continuous budget and all I'm seeing is 12 months. I haven't seen any department or, or any piece look beyond 12 months. I'm concerned about that um, because we said in the early discussions about this budget that there would be some looking forward in this budget okay so that we don't have to bite this all in one bite going forward. And, and my last concern in this budget, and the numbers that you sent me on Tuesday, was the goal is in the next fiscal year to be zero-based budget, and that we would implement some of that zero-based budgeting in this process. Uh, again, you sent me about 90 pages on Tuesday afternoon, and I haven't had the opportunity to go through all of the pages or get into another set of pages that, that you informed us that's not complete yet. Okay, uh, today, and I haven't seen any pieces of that. This is it. Okay. This is the, the work papers that you received. This is the, the complete portion. Okay. Okay, well, what I am having <coughs> difficulty finding in, in this is any um, sign of any one department or one piece of the department being zero based budget. And I, I mentioned that during the insolvency meetings and at the council meetings that that was not going to be possible for this year based on the time based on staff levels. Um, but it is something, and, and unfortunately, we're, we're, this was a lot of work we've been doing, so we, we're going to work towards that. That's what the insolvency plan wants to do. But fortunately, very difficult. Well, we acknowledge, I, I know that Councilman Miller and I have had conversations, and we acknowledge the, the tremendous step that you've taken from, like a, I mentioned to the city manager, that this back portion was all we ever did on budget you know what I mean? and now she's adding all this so she's created uh, new line items uh, new departments she's getting the, the, the foundation going and it's going to take her a little bit but I'm, I'm more than certain she's going to get to where we need to, to well and, and I wasn't necessarily looking for a response in, in my statement because I had some concerns sure. about this and what I was finished saying very much like uh, In, in the very, very first budget workshop that we had, we presented some slides and we talked about <coughs> what the budget process was going to be. I brought these points up about the zero-based budgeting, about the 36 month, about the 30% deficit, as well as uh, the 90-day reserves by fiscal year 2018-19. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, or I may have misunderstood what was said, but I was under the impression that some components of those were going to be included in this budget process. You said we would initiate the process, but it would be at the, the next budget cycle. Is, is what we're doing. And that's where she, by that point in time, she will have that. And, and through uh, budget amendments this coming year, as she's done this, her first year here, things change. And that's the process that she's going to utilize to meet the requirements that the council uh, stated that we would have these components by the next uh, fiscal year. So. Uh, one question I had, how did we get to that dollar amount uh, 
from the hotel motel that were given the or of the event center. How did we get to that dollar amount? What was it? Hundred twenty thousand. It's fifty percent of the operating cost of the but of the department. Well, not I, not the, of just the civic center department. The eligible fifty percent that's allowed. That's allowed. Yeah. We have we. Like events, you know, we could if we had more events that put heads in beds, we could do more, but we don't. So. This is the, and that was a line item that had historic more, at least in this fiscal year, it came out of the general fund. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it was quite smaller year before. Obviously, in, in, in a proposed budget, I know that when we talked about it originally in, in the first budget amendment that addressed the hotel motel tax that it got taken out of the budget amendment because of the purpose of uh, council wanting to be able to make some decisions on how, to, how hotel motel tax was expended. I, I recognize this as a recommendation from city staff to council on how to utilize part of the hotel motel tax. Okay. Could you go back, Councilman Miller, to the fund reserves? When you're talking fund reserves, are you talking about the ones that were required as a result of bond covenants? Or are you talking about fund reserves in addition to the... In addition. In addition. One of the things that, that we learned in the audit, or actually in the most, both, this most recent audit and the year before that that was cited as a concern, shall we say, was the fact that the, the city did not maintain general fund reserves, okay, for basic operation of the city, and that the the industry standard was 90 days, right. and so in the insolvency plan was set the goal or, or the target of having that industry standard 90 days of reserves by fiscal year 18. 19. 